And now we check back in with Brandis Friedman, who's live in Avondale as part of our Chicago Tonight In Your Neighborhood series. Brandis. Yeah, that's, that's right, Paris. Yeah, it sounds like that's uh, good news for the Chicago White Sox fans. Um, so, Paris, right now I'm being joined by 33rd Ward Alder woman, Rosanna Rodriguez Sanchez. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Technically, we know that we're not in your ward, but Avondale is. Uh, there are communities or parts of Avondale that are in your ward. Um, and it's a very diverse community, a lot of working class neighbors, um, but it's also uh, some areas are facing some significant uh, gentrification. How can you help people uh, to, to not be displaced uh, from that gentrification that's hitting Avondale? So my office has put in place a community driven zoning process um, with the purpose that uh, our community participates in the decisions that I as an elder woman make uh, when we change the zoning of different properties. Um, because we want people to have input in how our communities are developed and affordability is a big part of that. Our community is really committed to affordability so whenever we have a project that conversation will always be part of the process. Um, we are of course trying to work with developers that are bringing in affordable projects and with community organizations that fight for the same uh, cost. Okay, and to that end, you know, in a few minutes we're going to hear from the Avondale Neighborhood Association um, about creating this area's first ever community plan. What kind of resources would you like to see come to Avondale? I am really excited about working with uh, Avondale Neighborhood Association in that, in that plan. Again, they are very committed to affordable housing, so a big part of the work to do in that plan is to make sure that we are putting together resources to bring affordable housing. Avondale needs a library. Avondale does not have a library, and we have been thinking about how to do that, but we also need to talk about sustainability, about land use, um, and how to make sure that we are preventing gentrification and giving people the resources that they need. So pivoting just a little bit, Mayor Lightfoot announced yesterday that the city is facing a $733 million budget shortfall for the upcoming fiscal year. We know that's not quite as bad as it was uh, last year, but still a big hole to fill. What are some of your priorities when it comes to, to tackling that budget gap? Um, right now, I am really concerned about what uh, Mayor Lightfoot has expressed in terms of increasing the police budget at a moment where we are talking about a budget gap. To say that we are going to increase the budget of the most well-funded agency uh, in the government, in the municipal government, is very worrisome to me. I am also really worried about uh, the idea of giving a lot of that money to banks to pay off debt. I understand that we are in debt. We also just went through a pandemic and allowing banks to charge interest in this moment instead of fighting um, and, and, and working with banks to waive those fees so that we don't have to be paying interest at this moment and can focus on the needs of the people. Mental health, housing, jobs, we right. need all, and we're seeing a, a wave of, of a violence lot of resources that are in needed, the city of course, that we yeah. need to address. So that means you've got your work cut out for you. <laughs> 33rd Ward Alder woman for Santa Rodriguez Sanchez. Thank you so much for I joining us. I want to say that I stand in solidarity with the uh, local t uh, 12 20 workers negotiating with WTTW at the moment. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Thank you so much, uh, Alderwoman, for joining us. Paris, we'll send it back to you for now.